Hi, everybody. I am so excited to welcome Sarah Todd Hammer, who will be joining us today for our latest um, session of the Gamut Network. I've had the privilege of knowing Sarah Todd for a few years now, and I couldn't be more proud to welcome her to the show. So Sarah Todd, can you tell us a little bit about how old you are, your story? I think that our audience is going to be wowed by you. Thank you, Mindy. I'm so excited to be doing this today. Um, I'm Sarah Todd. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, when I was eight years old, I was at my ballet class. Ballet was my favorite thing and still is my favorite thing to do. And I all of a sudden got a really bad headache that kind of went into my neck. And the pain was so bad that my mom was going to take me home to rest. But on our way out of the studio, my arms and hands fell limp at my sides, paralyzed. So she took me to the urgent care center and I ended up staying in the hospital for two months. I ended up not being able to move my legs the next morning and I was paralyzed from the neck down out of the blue for no reason. I was diagnosed with transverse myelitis, but I've since been re-diagnosed with acute flaccid myelitis or AFM, and that's when- What is the difference between the two? So transverse myelitis is an autoimmune disorder, and that's when the body attacks the spinal cord, mm. and acute flaccid myelitis is when a virus attacks the spinal cord, and it's becoming kind of a new thing. They think that I was probably one of the very first cases wow. 10 years ago. Um, but it's becoming more prevalent and they think it's actually just caused by the virus that causes a cold. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So that probably the week before this experience at, at your ballet studio, maybe you just got a common cold. And I was and asymptomatic. Your body, it, it had like a, a, a weird a reaction. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. So you were eight years old. Suddenly you're life was turned upside down in the matter of a second. Yes. How, how does one manage that, especially at such a young age? Suddenly you are in the hospital for two months, you are fully paralyzed from the neck down? Yes. The time you're in the hospital. I recovered walking. I, and I started regaining movement in my toes after I had plasma exchange treatment. And then I was able to start moving my wheelchair with my legs because my arms didn't work and that helped my legs get stronger. So I mostly worked on walking in the hospital and I was able to walk out of the hospital with some help mm -hmm. two months later. So now it really is just my arms and hands that give me trouble. Um, I can't move my left hand and my shoulders. I really can't move very well. So I have like partial arm paralysis now. God. Okay. And similar to you gaining your, the, op, the ability to walk again, is that an option for your arms or has the damage been done? Um, I think since it's been almost 10 years, like I don't really hold on to that hope anymore. Um, but just because it's been so long and my motor neurons were damaged, so they won't come back. But I did recover for about three years, regaining strength afterwards. And I'm really pleased with how much I regained back. Honestly, I think I was very fortunate to recover so much. Wow. So now for members of our audience that are watching this, that perhaps have gone through something in their life that suddenly their life has changed. They had, mm -hmm. you know, they were born one way and now their life is completely different. Can you take us back to your journey of how do you, especially at such a young age, what, what did you draw upon to help get through that time of your life and into a new normal? Because I can't wait to tell everybody where you are now, but I, I think that's a piece that isn't often spoke about, spoken mm -hmm. about um, in terms of what did you draw upon to get mm -hmm. you through that time? 
Well, dancing was my favorite thing and I'd been dancing since I was three years old. So it was a really big part of my life. And that's really what kept me going was I really just wanted to recover so I could dance again. And even in the ICU, I had my dance company's videos on the TV and I was watching them. And I told my mom that I needed to get better on time to audition for the dance company. And then I didn't make that deadline. And so then I told her I needed to get better on time for my recital. And even though both those deadlines passed and I missed them, I still held on to the hope that I was gonna dance again. And in physical therapy, when I got out of the hospital, I stood on my tiptoes with my therapist and then I realized that I could try dancing again. So I went home and I tried dancing uh, with my dad watching me. And then when I did one dance, I kicked him out of the room and I was like, okay, I'm doing this again. This is my thing. And I didn't want anyone like watching me to make sure that I would be safe because I felt like I was getting back to my normal again. And that was my thing. And I did realize that I couldn't do the arm movements like I used to be able to, which was really frustrating, but that kind of helped me get into choreography because I just adjusted the moves to how I could do them. So it kind of helped me discover a new hobby. That's amazing. So it's, uh, it's the notion of having some type of goal, mm -hmm. right? That helped give you the drive um, to have something to work towards, um, to yes. get your hope around. Mm -hmm. So, and what I love, and, and certainly in other vi videos that we've done and interviews, we've heard this also that you discovered something new about yourself, mm -hmm. um, which I think is amazing. Tell us a little bit about your journey of being you know, through elementary school, middle school, high school, mm -hmm. with having a difference? Did mm -hmm. you have challenges? Were people accepting? Talk to us a little bit about what it was like as a young person with a difference. I was in second grade when this happened to me, and it happened in April, so I was done with my end of the year testing, so I just didn't go back to school that year. And then third grade, I was homeschooled and my teacher that I would have at school came home to my house and taught me, which was really nice. And I was homeschooled that year so I could focus on therapy because I was doing like three hours a day and the drive was like 30 minutes. And so I just wouldn't have had time to go to school. But I did return in fourth grade and I had a full-time aide by my side. And that made it really hard because I had an adult like attached at my hip. And when you're 10 years old, like that's not cool or anything. Exactly. Um, but my friends for only being like nine and 10 years old were really accepting. And I think it was because they knew me before. So like they just knew Sarah Todd. Um, and even in like fifth grade, um, I did still have an aide, but one of my friends helped me put my jacket on before recess without me even asking her, and she was only 11 years old. So I felt like that was really nice. Um, so for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, I did have an aide by my side, but then I transitioned to a different school for seventh through 12th grade that my mom went to and, and my, both my brothers went to, and my mom always wanted me to go there. Um, and it's a private school, so so well, I didn't have an aide, and we thought that seventh graders could just be old enough and mature enough to help me. And so that has gone really well. I just, since seventh grade, have relied on my friends to help me put my backpack on or like get my lunch, open doors, and things like that. And I've never had anyone say no. So it's I been. And I, and I think from the perspective of the world that we are living in right now, I, I'm sure your friends, if I interviewed them, would say, I don't even think twice about it. It's just mm -hmm. Sarah Todd. Mm -hmm. And that I'm sure has taught them a lot of who people with disabilities are. Mm -hmm. You're just like your friends. You have the same likes, wishes, passions, fears. Definitely. You know, here you are in your senior year, and I'm so excited to say that you are going to, where are you going next year? Davidson. Yeah, so proud. Davidson, North Carolina. 
it's so exciting. <laughs> and that, that is just, you know, thankfully you're on the same path of hopefully many, many other seniors out there that are about to start the new chapter yes. of their life. But on top of everything else, <laughs> I can't wait for our audience to know that you are an author <laughs> and have written, what are we up to? Four books? Three books. Three books. Mm -hmm. Three books. I mean, that. and how old were you when you wrote your first book? I started writing it when I was 10 and then it was published when I was 11. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, I have three kids. I know what my kids are were doing and still have a 10 year old and he certainly is not writing books. Um, I'm sure he has other spectacular. Yes, I'm sure they're doing great things. <laughs> we still need to discover. But I thought it'd be really wonderful for our audience to hear an ex excerpt of your book. Um, this one is called Determination. Yes. And wh where was that in the, is this the second book, third book? First this book. is the second book, so it picks up from where the first book left off, and this is from about um, 2012 to 2014. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And so could you give us a little background of the part that you're going to read from a little yes. bit so that we know what we're getting into? Yes. Um, so I'm going to read the uh, prologue of the second book. And I'm writing about when I was at a camp for families who have dealt with transverse myelitis and acute flaccid myelitis. And I went to this camp over the summer for a few years. Um, and they have a talent show every year. And I performed a dance that I choreographed. And this was my first time back on stage for real after getting AFM and my first time ever doing a solo. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Sarah Todd Hammer, please read from your book. <laughs> the announcer's voice bellowed through the rather large room saying, next we have Sarah Todd performing her dance adrift. The crowd cheered and clapped and I gave Jen, my friend, a quick hug before walking a bit onto the stage as the curtains opened. At first, when I thought the music was going to begin, the auditorium remained silent and I got worried the music wasn't going to work at all. I stood on stage for almost a minute with no music, waiting, and the crowd started to cheer me on, thinking I was too nervous to do my dance, which wasn't true at all anymore. I was more than ready right when I stepped foot on the stage. The stage worker motioned for me to go backstage, and the curtains closed. Worried, I asked if the music was going to work, and they said they figured it out. Pleased, I looked back at Jen, offering a small smile, which she returned. The curtains began to reopen, and thankfully, the music played. I started my dance, which began with sulking around and finding a nearby bench to sit on. A drift was performed to Falling Slowly, which is a song from one of my favorite musicals called Once. The dance was sad. It told a story of a homeless girl looking for a family. I truly danced my heart out on stage, earning very loud cheers and go Sarah Todd's from the crowd. When I finished, I ran backstage and hugged Jen, both of us smiling widely. She had tears of joy streaming down her face as we walked out to the audience. When you were doing your long-term combination and everyone was going wild, I was silently praying that you wouldn't mess it up, and you didn't. Everything was perfect, Jen told me. In the audience, I received many congratulations and good jobs. One of my friend's moms came up to me and gave me a big hug, also crying. She told me how great I did and how proud she was of me. I thanked her and went to see my parents, getting many more sweet compliments on the way. My mom and dad were very happy, and my mom was crying as well. Jen and I went to go sit with one of our favorite counselors, and of course, she was also crying. The reaction to my dance was unbelievable, and everyone who talked to me after afterwards thought it was amazing. I was so happy that I was able to perform my solo because it was the first solo I had ever performed on stage, and the first time I had performed on stage since getting AFM. It was a super special moment for me, and I know it was for the audience too, as well as Jen. I kept wanting to go back on the stage and do it again since I had so much fun and felt so accomplished. It seemed that I had regained a lot of the confidence that I knew I had years before when I performed on stage all the time. This was the first piece to the whole story, the beginning. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Unbelievable. So to recap, if, could you just tell us the, the titles of your three books and where everybody can find them? Because I'm sure they're going to want to read more. Yes, my first book is called 
a 5K ballet and a spinal cord injury. Um, and the second book is called Determination. And the third book is called Up and Down. And they're all on Amazon. And they're also on Lulu.com. Amazing. <laughs> I, it's always such a joy to talk to you. I Thank absolutely you. adore you. But before we go, um, I am asking all of my guests the same question before we leave. I have a vision board here that I look at every single day with things that I believe are going to happen in my life. Who or what would be on your vision board? On my vision board, I definitely see myself publishing more books. Um, I already have an idea for her fourth book. I really want to write about my experience in college and have and have each focus on my four years and talk about how it is going to college as a person with a disability and the challenges that I find and what I overcome and things that I discover. So that's definitely my main goal on my vision board. And I also want to do more speaking just because I love encouraging people and sharing my story with everyone. I love it. And I firmly believe all of that is definitely going to come through. Thank you. Uh, for our viewers, if they want to ask questions or just connect with you, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, I'm really active on my Instagram, which is just my full name, Sarah Todd Hammer. You can find me on there and I also have a website which is again my full name just sarahtodhammer.com amazing Sarah Todd thank you so much for joining us today I love seeing you you too this was so great thank you so much for having me beyond my pleasure <laughs> bye thank you Mindy <laughs> please email us at talent at gamut management and tell us a little bit about why you would be a great guest on our show.